All right, we are going to do a little video today, and we're going to be looking at every single New York Rangers prospect of relative note. I think I maybe only excluded like eight prospects from this. So like there is there is a lot to talk about today. As you can see, all my tabs pulled up thanks to Elite Prospects in their wonderful database. We have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 2, 4, 6. We have about 30 prospects here that we're going to look at. We're going to see how they're performing and we're going to we're honestly going to mostly talk about whether or not they're going to stick with the Rangers or not or Rangers are going to either try to move them or let their rights expire or just whatever. Um we're probably going to do some passing way too early judgment on these prospects as these are all, again, like literal kids finding their way in the adult world. And, uh, yeah, let's, let's, let's have fun with it. Let's have fun with it. The Rangers got absolutely, what the fuck is this? The Rangers got absolutely just shellacked last night. Like, it was bad. So, let's look at something that maybe will make us a little bit excited. Starting off with Jaden Gruby, third round pick by the Rangers in 2021. So, really only two years separate from his draft. He's only 19 years of age. I believe his rights expire in 2024. He is unsigned. Uh, sitting in at 6'3", 203, there is, def there is a defining skill here. It's Gruby's defense. Less aggressive and more quietly intelligent. Blah, 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 blah. So, smart kid. Good kid. Putting up numbers this season. Wow. 37 points in 31 games. That's not bad. And another one of those Rangers prospects, like uh, it was me and uh, Ice Cold and me and Step Boy Steven talked about another Rangers prospect who is a is just a leader. He's been a captain of this team for three years. He's been in WHL for four years and a captain for three. That is freaking wild. Uh, let's take a look at Red Deer and see why he's having so much success this year. Is he is a better supporting cast? He's actually kind of carrying the torch himself. Him, him and Kai Uchach. I do not know who this is. He's also 19, though. Undrafted. Rangers just signed him. Just playing. Uh, but, yeah. Uh, Jaden Groove. Uh, I'm not going to lie. This is my first time looking at these prospects. along. So, I mean, I'm, I'm passing judgment alongside you guys. Pretty good for Jaden Groove. I bet you the Rangers do offer him a contract and bring him over next year. Moving on to another captain, Bryce McConnell Barker. Another captain of his uh, of his team. Third round pick by the Rangers in this past draft. Um, 97th overall. A centerman supporting game and is, is, uh, is his biggest asset. He's a link between two ways. So a good two way center. Captain of the Sioux Greyhounds. 34 points in 31 games, 49, 60 before. So another point per game player. Another player that wears a C, another player that plays an up and down game. Chris Drury has a style. Man, I really think I might want to start paying for elite prospects so I can get like all these guides and stuff. Let's see how Sue's doing and see if what he's doing is a fluke or not. No, it is not. He is leading his team. Okay. Yeah. Actually, he's leading his team in every category but assists. He's second in assists. That's pretty damn impressive. Bryce McConnell Barker. And I know uh, Sepoy Stevens speaks very highly of this kid, so I, I'm gonna take I'm gonna take his word for it. Um, I guess he's not in World Juniors, but either way, yeah, Bryce McConnell Barker, only 18 years of age, so he'll probably spend another season in the OHL after this one, since I don't believe the Rangers will be able to call him up after that. He actually might even have to spend two seasons in the O show this season, next season, and maybe even the year after. I'm not sure how that works exactly, but. Hell of a start here for Bryce McConnell Barker. That's freaking awesome. 18 years of age. He will not be 19 until June 4th. So this kid is young. Wow. All right. Off to a really hot start here. The future's looking good. Maxine Barbershop. This is the kid I was most excited when the Rangers uh, in this past draft for the New York Rangers. 19 years old. So he's a bit on the older side now. I mean, he's one of the older players in this draft. But who gives a shit? He's still 19 years old. He's a teenager. He's younger than me. So I have nothing to say. Uh, Barbershop. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Okay. So this kid is physical as hell. I don't know if you guys have seen some of his some of the checks he's been laying out, uh, but the fact that he fell to the fifth round is a damn miracle. He's got tw 26 points in 30 games, 42 and 59 the year before in the Q show. Um, the kid lays bod, does not take a lot of does not take a lot of penalties, and is just solid up and down the ice. This is a player I think Rangers fans should be very excited for because I think Max and Barbashev has a really has like a really uh, NHL relatable game and like a middle six scoring checking role, almost like a Barkley Goudreau type, but with more puck skills. Yeah. Barbershev is going to be solid. His brother, his brother Ivan Barbershev, is in the NHL. So yeah, Max and Barbershev. I'm 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 high on Max and Barbershev. Brett Berard, 
This kid's been hot and cold, upside down, inside out. I'm about to show you people what it's all about. Drafted two years ago, 5'9", 165. Uh, thought to be a steal at one point. Fall asleep at other points. Just interesting. Interesting preparer. I'm still very high on him, but he's not. Oh, he's still producing at a pretty much a point per game place at pace at Providence College. I'm not going to click on their stats because there is another Providence College uh, player. Um, Yaroslav Kevlar, and we'll take a look at his stats, and we'll click on the Providence College page when we do that. Uh, but Brett Berard, still at a point per game pace in the uh, in the NCAA at 20 years of age. He's been a very high-scoring player at the NCAA uh, as an undersized guy, which is friggin' awesome. It's very impressive. Um, NCAA numbers, 0.88 points per game. He's got translatable skill to an NHL game in that he's fast. He's got good hands. A good, he's got a good shot. He plays his friggin' ass off, plays hard, works hard. Um, and... You know, I I don't want to pass judgment or, or say anything on Brett Berard's behalf. I do believe that if he doesn't uh, if he doesn't want to leave the NCAA next year, he will go back another year uh, next year and then play in the AHL a year after that. The Rangers, I do believe, signed him to his ELC. I believe I could be wrong on that, but um, I I don't think he'll be in the NHL anytime soon. I do believe he'll spend at least another year in the NCAA after this year, and then a year in Hartford, and then we'd call him up, and then he's gonna have to continue to traject upwards in order for everything to work out. It's just how, you know, later draft picks tend to pan out. They hardly ever make the league right off the rip. They have a very long journey ahead of them, and I believe Brett Burrard is a player that has a long journey ahead of him, but I have faith in him. The, the, kid, the kid is an absolute workhorse. His centerman, Yaroslav Kemlar, drafted by the Rangers two years ago, another fifth-round pick. The Rangers seem to do pretty damn good in the fifth round. Barsha, Burrard, and, uh, and now Kemlar. Kemlar at Providence College, 10 points in 18 games. Uh, playing for Checha right now, World Juniors, two points, two games. Um, I don't know. I don't know an awful lot about Kemlar. I believe Sapoy Steven touched on him not this past year, but the year before. Um, yeah, Providence College is kind of stacked, so it's kind of hard to be like, oh well, look at him, he's scoring a lot. Well, everyone on Providence College is scoring a lot, but every time we hear Yaroslav Kemlar's name mentioned by um, by people who watch Providence games, they speak very highly of him. So that's got to be a good thing. Uh, another NCAA. Oh, hold on. Little slow here. Got a lot of pages opening. <laughs> Noah Lab, another NCAA uh, player, uh, playing at Colorado College, drafted by the Rangers this past year in the fourth round. Uh, Nineteen years of age. Um, wow, seventeen, po eleven points in seventeen games. I did not know Lab was producing at that high a clip right now. Man, the Rangers really have been like super underrated at like how well they're drafting prospects. Because that's actually not bad numbers for the kid. 100, wow, 115 pims in the U shell last year. Holy Jesus. Severely cut them down this year. He's over two pims a game. He's hardly a pim a game at Colorado College. Let's see if his scoring is of his own ambition or if he's actually a supporting cast member. No, he's actually on the higher score. Wow, who is this kid? Hunter McCown. Who are you? 20 years old. Defensive zone, the guy's got 13 damn goals. And he's undrafted. He doesn't belong to anybody. Well, that would be a sneaky signing for an NHL team. 13 goals in 18 games. Wow, if he continues to pace like that, he'll be... Wow, okay. Well, anyway, sorry. We're talking about uh, we're talking about Noah Lab, but not, uh, not undrafted college free agents. Uh, yeah, no Laba. Seven goals, four assists, 11 points in 17 games. Only 22 pins. Dash 10, but Colorado, I guess, is underperforming this season. But uh, either way, no Laba, for, considering he just got drafted and he's already producing at a clip that's over 0.5 points per game at an NCAA level as a draft pick that was not in the top 30 of the draft, is pretty damn good. I like that. Again, New York Rangers, super underrated at drafting players late in the draft. Adam Sikora, uh, I'm not sure what's going on with him. I, I know there was some, like, legal crap that happened, um... A little bit ago. But anyways, I actually really liked the way uh, Adam Sakura played in the preseason. I thought Sakura played well enough to earn at least an NHL game or less than nine games. Uh, because I just thought he was that noticeable in the preseason as a young player. But obviously, you don't, you're not going to force a guy into a situation like that. Uh, the Rangers did sign him. He is signed. Um, he went back over to Nitra. Nine points in 20 games. Again, I don't think I don't think anyone was really expecting him to produce at a super high level right now. I think we were more just waiting for him to develop and marinate a bit. I know he's compared to Jesper Foss with maybe a little bit more bite, but Rangers, would, would they just got to be patient, remain patient, and let the kid develop at his own pace. You're not expecting a point-per-game player in the Czech League or Slovakian League, whatever, whichever, yeah, Slovakian League, whichever one he plays in. 
you're just kind of letting him develop into the player he needs to be, which is going to be a role player. You know, you're not Adam Sakura. I don't believe will be you know a top six you know premier scoring threat. You know, the person you buy tickets to come see type player. I think he's going to be an excellent cog and an excellent fit and a beautiful puzzle piece to a Stanley Cup winning team someday. And um, you know, Chris Drury is. I think he's made a point to draft role players essentially to build around the core that's already in place, which is not a bad idea because typically when you're drafting role players, you have a lot more success than when you try to pick up players that are going to be the pieces. That's when you get that's when you you know get a lot of disappointment. That's why teams like Tampa Bay, you know, they're drafting these guys in late rounds and they're making the league and they're making immediate impact because they're not being drafted to be superstars. They're being drafted to fill roles. They're being groomed for those roles and they're filling those roles pretty damn well. Look at Ross Colton. Look at uh, who's the kid that got traded to Otto, who's doing really good right now. Um, his freaking name is slipping my mind. Um, shit. Uh, Matthew Joseph, I believe his name is. Matthew Joseph, yes. Uh, I just Or even Adam Sorelli. Like, guys, they drafted late round to become role players. They're not doing anything more than but be a role player on their team, and they are absolutely flourishing them. And by becoming those role players, they're learning how to become even more than a role player, and they're getting better and better and better. And now the Rangers are kind of taking a page out of their book and drafting guys to be role players and allowing them to grow into that role and flourish into that role. Oh, that was a lot of words. But anyways, I'm, I'm very happy with the way the Rangers are drafting. Adam Sikora is a pick that I am very high on because I think he's going to be a major piece uh, for the New York Rangers going forward. Moving on to a little bit more of a disappointing pick, Oliver Tarnstrom, a third-round pick, I believe 70th overall a few years ago. Yeah, 2020, third, uh, third round pick, 92nd overall. So not as bad as 70th overall, I guess. I will be 21 uh, next August. Sent back down to Al Svenskin, so not getting SHL minutes, which is what I think people were hoping he was going to get. Not producing awfully in Al Svenskin. He's half a point a game. I really, I'm, I'm, not, I'm just not seeing it with Oliver Tarnstrom. I, I really am not. I just, I don't know, I don't know what happened. I don't know why he's not. He just seems to be plateauing, which is a shame. I'm not going to pass judgment on a 20-year-old, but it's. I think it's safe to say that he's one of our lesser prospects at the moment. I don't really think anyone's too high on him right now. And, um, yeah, I mean, at this point, with Oliver Tarnstrom, it is what it is. I mean, if he's going, if he's going to, if he's going to make a case to, to earn an NHL contract and, um, and become an NHL player or a North American player at some point. It's it's up to him at this point, and he's got a he's got a, a long road ahead of him. It looks like because it doesn't really appear like he's developed too much as his draft year. Maybe a little bit, but not a whole lot. So we'll see what happens with uh, with Oliver Tarnstrom. But I'm, I'm I'm pretty low on Oliver Tarnstrom. I actually when his rights expire. Uh, so his rights will expire after next season. It looks like yeah I. I I don't think the Rangers will be re-signing. The Rangers never, unless their name's Pavel Bushnevich, hardly ever hit on third-round picks. At least that's what it feels like. Moving on to Adam Edstrom. Uh, 22 years old, drafted in 2019. He's the big boy, 6'8", 225, according to Elite Prospects. Uh, Adam Edstrom right now is actually one of the few Rangers prospects overseas that are producing at a higher clip every time they um, for after each passing season except for this season. Uh, seven points in 19 games, definitely an expanded role this season, it would look like. I know Stat Boy Steven talks about him a lot. You know, Edstrom is the kind of guy where I, you got to think the Rangers will be bringing him over to North America next year and that he's going to be a twenty, he's gonna be 23 years old. I guess he's going to be like the next Tim Gettinger experiment, like a big power forward with scoring potential, um, who maybe they hope develops into a Brian Boyle type. But I'm honestly... I'm honestly not sure. I'm not overly high on Adam Edstrom. I'm also not low on Adam Edstrom. I do think he has... I do think he does have some sort of translati translatability, if that's even a word, to North American hockey. I just don't know about his foot speed. I don't know if he'll be able to keep up with the game. And as for a Brian Boyle type in today's NHL is... It's like catching lightning in a bottle. The, the current NHL is super, super fast. And, you know, at 6'8", 2 and a quarter. Likely the foot speed is not going to be there, so you got to kind of hope it's going to develop and hopefully be there. But who knows? Who knows? I, you know, I've been wrong before. Look at uh, 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 who's that guy in Detroit right now that's absolutely lighting up that big kid, El El Elmer Soderblom. I don't think Edstrom has nearly the you know the hands or the shot or anything of Elmer Soderblom. But if a big guy like Soderblom can do it, why can't Adam Edstrom do it? Again, another mid prospect. Don't really think too high or too low of him. Zachary Carper, another Harvard University smart kid. <laughs> Going to Harvard, not bad, I guess. 20 years old, uh, drafted as an overager. 
Uh, Six-round pick of this past draft. Over half a point a game this year for Harvard. So, you know, this, again, this is just another, like, guy. The Rangers just are just so smart at drafting these players. Like, late in drafts and just, wow, we've got a twin brother. What? No way. In the gnaw. In the gnaw. I play, listen, as as someone that plays, that's a freaking beer leaguer and just an absolute loser. It really does not do very much in terms of high-level hockey. I play against guys often who have played or play in the null. That is no joke. <laughs> that is like good hockey. It's not professional hockey by any means. It's not like you're playing like, you know, NCAA or even NC3 for that matter. But those kids that play in the null are freaking gross. But anyways, back to Zachary Carbon, not his twin brother who is severely underperforming compared to him. Uh, Zachary Carbon, half a point a game at Harvard, not bad. Let's let's see what his supporting cast is like. If, if this is him producing thanks to other players, or this is him really just kind of, you know, working hard. I mean, yeah, he's eighth in his team in scoring. Wow, that kid's pretty solid. But, hey, all that matter is he's uh, draft year plus one right now. He's 20, 20 years old. He'll be 21 next year, and he's producing on a half a point a game clip. Who knows what happens with a guy like uh, Zachary Carper? Who knows? You just got to wait and see. But that's, again, another really solid draft pick by the Rangers. Brody Lamb, I believe we drafted him out of high school two years ago now. Uh, Brody Lamb, 6'1", still only 19 years old. 2021 draft pick, only 19 old. It'll be 20 next August, like r- literally during... The uh, next year's training camp, he will still be a teenager. At the end of training camp, he'll be 20 years old. Um, <clears throat> fourth round pick, shooting ability, passing skill, yada, yada, yada. The Rangers drafted him in 2021. Yes, after his USHL season. No, high school. 87 points in 24 games. Um, not great numbers at UMAN, I guess, right now. Three points in 19 games. But I think I think the Rangers drafted him knew, knowing that he was going to be a, longer, a long-term project. This, he only played... And you can argue maybe a year and a half in the U show, USHL, and he had 41 points in 62 games. Um, I, this is a player that I'm, I'm not going to really say much about right now because he's going to take a long time to develop. I mean, he only just got out of playing high school high school level hockey two years ago, or not even a full two years ago. So it's impossible to pass judgment on this kid right now. But I do think Brody Lamb is like one of those really like sleeper prospects that might have a slow start in NCAA, but could really pick it up. And uh, that might be might be. Speaking out of term here, but could potentially be a Hobie Baker uh, candidate if he projects and produces the way that he everyone thought he possibly could after his senior year at um, in high school. 87 points, 52 goals in 24 games is like ridiculously impressive, especially at high school in Minnesota. The 17-year-old, 66, 46, and 22. Like that's absolutely ridiculous. So, who knows what happened with Brody Lamb if he you know if he continues to grow, put on some weight, only a buck 65 right now. This kid could be super solid, super solid. Speak, I got going back for another big boy, Hugh Joe, not Hugo, Hugh Joe, six foot friggin' eight, 238 pounds. The guy is a refrigerator on skates. He just happens to play goalie. It's a freaking walrus. Remember those commercials? Yeah, that is Hugo Olas. Uh, seventh round pick, 197th overall in 2020. And Hugo Olas has done nothing but get better and better every passing year. You know, the Rangers talk about having Igor Shesterkin and Dylan Garan in the wakes. Well, how about freaking Hugh Joe? 920 save percentage last year. This year at a 932 save percentage, a 172 goals against average for Merrimack College. Yeah, Hugo Olas might be the real freaking deal. Uh, I, I mean, the, these are absolutely just unheard of numbers. A 932 save percentage in the NCAA. I guess Zachary Borgiel, he's competing with for that. I guess he's fighting with. They're splitting time. But, oh man, I am huge on Hugo Olas. I think this kid could be super freaking solid, and I hope that he earns that starting role and keeps that starting role because, ooh, man, I'm telling you right now, the Rangers have some scary goalie prospects in in Garand and Olas, and they're going to be battling for Hartford's starting job because I'll tell you this right now, the way way I see things going is that next year, Louis Dominguez is going to get pumped to the NHL. He's going to take over uh, Yaroslav Halak's backup role, which I think should have just been the case this year. Deming should have been the NHL backup this year. The Rangers should not have signed Garcelle Halak and wasted a buck, buck five million on him. But whatever. Um, I do believe that Garan will be the starter of the Hartford Wolfpack next year. I don't know what the hell that was, and that Hugo Olas, not next year but the year after, will be uh, will take the reins and net over there. And I think this kid is going to be solid. Speaking of another huge goalie, Talon Boyko, six foot eight, two hundred one pounds. Man, the Rangers love their six eighters. Uh, fourth round pick uh, two years ago now. Not wow, putting up awful numbers right now for Kellen. A nine thirteen Kellen last year, an eight eighty six this year. 
Kellen must be absolute dog shit if he's putting up numbers like that. What a shitty season for Boyko. And I believe this is his last year of uh, WHL. So he will have to be signed or released next year. Oh, he is signed. So I don't know what the Rangers can do with Talon Boyko. He might be a coasty next year. I do not think he's going to be in the AHL if he's putting up numbers like that. Yikers. Absolute yikers. And he's being outplayed right now by another goaltender. So, uh, not looking good for Talon Boyko. I'm not going to say much on him, but that is not a good look. Moving on from Talon Boyko, I believe it's going to be Brendan Ottman. Yes, Brendan Ottman. All right, everyone's favorite and, and top prospect right now. The kid's still only 19. He'll be 20 years old in uh, basically a week's time, pretty much. I think it's eight days away. Uh, there is nothing to not like about Brendan Ottman. The kid is everywhere. The only thing he's not doing is he's not scoring as much with Peter Burke. He did get traded to the Peter Burke as he was with the Flint Firebirds, where he was the captain. Um, yeah, it kind of... Uh, it's amazing that you could look at a point per game player and say he's having a down year. He just really hasn't taken off with Peterburg uh, as much as uh, Peterborough as he as he was with Flint. But he's also got a much better supporting cast than Peterburg. He doesn't need to be the guy. There are good players around him. Like yeah, you got boom, Tucker Robertson, Connor Walker. Like there are other point per game players on this team. He is not choices A through D in terms of get him the puck and let let an Italian player. Sorry, I'm easily distracted. There's no way this is an Italian player, right? Look at this fucking beauty. That's awesome. That is freaking awesome. I was not aware there was an attack. That is awesome. Wow, I am in a really good mood now. Anyway, sorry. Back to the lecture at hand. I, just, I, got, I got distracted. I saw an Italian player. That was cool. Uh, but Brennan Ottman, uh, he's the Rangers' hands-down best prospect right now. It's not even close. I do believe he actually will get NHL games this year if Peter Burrow does not have a good run and gets eliminated early in the um, in WHL playoffs. And if they don't make the... Um, What's it called? The um, uh, Jesus Christ. The C What's the CHL Cup called? The um, I'm drawing a blank right now. Holy Jesus! Memorial Cup. There you go. Uh, yeah. If they, if they get bounced and they're not competing for that, I do believe that we will see uh, Brendan Ottman in a Rangers jersey this season. Moving on, I believe this is going to be Dylan Garon now. Yeah, now we're up to um, actual um, professional hockey players, the like guys that are playing for the, either the Rangers, the Wolfpack, or the Jacksonville Iceman. Uh, Dylan Garon not having a good a year this year as he did last year, um, but still his first professional season, and he's got almost a 900 save percentage for the... Um... Sorry, one second. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, still almost a 900 save percentage for a Hartford Wolfpack team that is severely underperforming. Uh, their Wolfpack will never be good. I'm just convinced of it at this point. But still, uh, he's got in 13 games, 4-6-4 four, four record. Um, and, and an eight ninety eight for his first year playing professional hockey as an undersized goaltender is pretty damn good. And he said undersized. He's six foot. He's taller than me. Um, but yeah, I, I have no worries about Dylan Garand and, and, and how this season defines his legacy. Now, Dylan Garand is going to be just fine. And I do believe that he is good enough to be the New York, uh, the, New York Rangers, the Harvard Wolfpack starting goaltender next year. Assuming that Louis Domingue is called up and is the Rangers' backup next year. Speaking of a more depressing goaltending prospect, the player I still don't know why the frick the Rangers drafted him, Olaf Lindbaum, 22 years of age, will be 23. He's second-round pick, 39th overall, a top-40 pick. <sighs> Played with the Jacksonville Icemen right now in the East Coast League and is continuing to get lit up like he has in every other league. I do not mean to be rude to uh, Olaf Lindbaum. I just still... For the love of God, do not understand why the Rangers drafted Olaf Lindbaum. He was one of the lowest rated uh, draft eligible goaltenders that were projected to be drafted in a draft class. He was, I believe, the first goaltender drafted off the board and who drafted him but the New York Rangers in 2018. Still, for the love of God, do not understand why the Rangers did that, but they did. So we are here now. And this is the hand that we were dealt. I, I really don't see a future for Olaf Lindbaum. I, I, just, I just don't see it. I don't think anybody sees it. He really hasn't performed at a high level anywhere in recent history. So... I'm not really even going to touch very much on Olaf Lindbaum. I just don't think very highly of him. Hunter Skinner, a kid that I is like the Brennan Crowley. I, I, I see. And Joey Keane type where like he is probably going to be subject and punished from the Rangers having too many good defenseman prospects. Uh, Hunter Skinner, uh, right now playing in the coast for the Jacksonville Icemen. 
have a point of game as a defenseman. The guy can shoot the puck over 100 miles an hour. It really is a shame because I think in, in most systems, he would be an AHL defenseman just for the Ranger system. I just think they're too deep, and he's a coasty. Uh, when Hunter Skinner played for the Rangers in the preseason, he played a really solid game. I actually thought he had a chance to fight for like the first call-up for the Rangers if a defenseman went down to be the seventh defenseman, but wasn't to be. I, I still... I don't think I don't want to say that like like I think he's gonna be like the next Bobby Orr. I I don't think highly of Hunter Skinner, but I, I do believe there is an NHL ceiling there for him with in some capacity, whether it's you know as a seventh or sixth defenseman. I do believe he has the potential to be one. His shot alone is already at an NHL level. It's just I guess he's got to round up more of his game, skating, passing, defending the set and the other thing. But I do believe Hunter Skinner is a solid defenseman. I just don't see him having a future with the Rangers. I do believe that the Rangers are not going to re-sign him once his contract expires and he'll be free to sign elsewhere, whether it's in Europe or with another minor league team. Ryder Korczak, I think everyone was hoping that he was going to fit in the AHL this year. Really did not. Got sent back down to the dub. Uh, played five AHL games, not a single point. Dash four, 21 points in 13 games with Moose Draw. He's, you know, he's back with his W team. He's going to light up this year in the WHL is really all you can hope for. Reset and just hope for a better start to the uh, uh, AHL for him next year. But right now, there's not really much to say about uh, Ryder Korzak. I'm still super high on Ryder Korzak. The, the kid's got hands. He's got skate. He can just do everything. He plays his ass off. Uh, and, I, and, I, and there is definitely an NHL ceiling for Ryder Korzak. I, I, I almost see him as a, um, like, uh, almost like a Nazem Kadri type. I don't think he's as good or will be as good as Nazem Kadri, almost like a poor man's Nazem Kadri, in that he can play whatever role you need him to be. He's He is feisty as shit. He's got good hands. He can pass. He can shoot. He can pretty much do everything. So I. I I, I could see him projecting as like his his ceiling and and playing a moose draw, you know. We're almost kind of hoping he was like a what we thought Brett Howden was going to be, which is a middle six center. Um, not to jinx him, not to jinx him, but I, I do see uh, a ceiling where Ryder Korzak is a really solid middle six center, a good third line center in the NHL with scoring upside, uh, who defends well, four checks, kind of just does everything right. So I, I do see you know trans an NHL translation for Ryder Korzak, but. He's got a long journey ahead. If Ryder Korzak does make the NHL, it's probably two or three years down the road. Patrick Kodoranko, a guy I think the Rangers are just going to release after this season. Uh, really not much going on there. You know, his fourth season right now in the Wolfpack. I guess third full season, but I just don't, I don't know. Great, a great NCAA player is just, has not translated well to North American hockey. Now, is that, is that a result of the Rangers having an awful developmental system in Hartford? An awful team in Hartford, and this guy just can't seem to grow off of it. But, or is it just he just I don't know. To tell you the truth, I think a lot of these guys that are currently playing in Hartford, the reason they're not producing is because the Hartford Wolfpack suck. They are awful at developing players and putting them in a position to succeed, and that the Rangers will continue to fail to produce good products out of the Hartford Wolfpack for that sole purpose. They just can't seem to develop and, and get a good farm system going. You got teams like the Toronto Marlies and the Syracuse Crunch and all these other AHL. Uh, teams where like the you know players go to the AHL, they come up and they're immediate impact players in the NHL. Where the Rangers just seriously cannot seem to do that with their AHL team. And it's a real shame. The Hartford Wolfpack and all of the Rangers AHL affiliates have just been awful, awful for decades now, and it's a damn shame because the key to a great NHL team that wants repeated and continued success is having a good farm system. And the Rangers have a good farm system until they get to the AHL and they just fail to develop their players year after year after year, prospect after prospect. And it's a shame. And they got to get their shit sorted because this is a kid that was. Pretty much a point of game throughout his entire NCAA career, except for his freshman year. And the second he comes to the AHL, it's like he forgot how to play hockey. And it is a freaking shame. Because this is like a guy that you could argue the Rangers stole um, as an undrafted college free agent. And you really can't do anything with him. It's frustrating. <coughs> another big boy, uh, Matt Rempe, is turning more of a physical presence down there. 6'8", 240. Again, another freaking unit. He tries hard. Um... The uh, Wolfpack game I went to when they played in Charlotte this year, he was really not very noticeable. Um, I don't really see a future for Matthew Rempe in the NHL. The role of the tough guy is pretty much gone in the NHL. He's not fast enough to keep up. He's got okay hands, okay shot. He's kind of okay at everything. Jack of all trades, master of none, and hardly the jack of all trades. Just, we'll see what happens with Matthew Rempe. Who knows? Maybe he could develop into something. Maybe a checking role type deal, but I just... With guys like Adam Edstrom, I think ahead of him on the depth chart, I really don't see, I really don't see Rempe doing much. But again, who knows? These are these are literal kids, so they could do, they could pretty much do anything. So we'll see what happens. I don't know. I'm not trying to be hard on them. I just don't really know. Especially again, going back to how poor Hartford is at developing their young players, I just don't see an NHL future with Rempe and the Rangers. 
Another prospect that is just subject to awful development in, in Hartford. Second round pick, 50th overall in 2019. Some some thought he had a top six ceiling, Carl Henriksen. Really just slow and poor development for Henriksen. Seven points in 44 SHL games, then 9-40, and 40, now 5-27 and 27 in the AHL. Not much you could really say about the kid right now. He's just like all Rangers prospects. They get the Hartford and they struggle. So just a waiting game. Who knows what happens with Carl Henriksen? I... I I do believe the Rangers will give him another year, but at some point he's gonna get he's gonna get passed up on the depth chart. So I don't know. I have two Laurie Pagnanis open. I'm just now noticing. Go ahead and close one of those. Zach Jones uh, would be an NHL defenseman on most other teams, just not for the Rangers. 22 years of age, producing at half a point a game clip right now in the A show. He's producing at a better clip than that uh, last year. He's got to be patient, wait, let him continue to develop. Hopefully his scoring will go up. Again, the Hartford Wolfpack are an awful team, so you're really not expecting him to do too much for the Hartford Wolfpack because the Wolfpack suck. So you kind of just, you know, what happens, happens. Zachary Jones, in my opinion, is an NHL-ready defenseman. The Rangers' depth charge is a little bit too deep, and I, I don't think Galan has much trust in him. I do believe that uh, Zach Jones will be traded by the Rangers at the deadline this year for help and will develop into a probably a solid top four defense in front of the team. I just don't see a future with him and the Rangers unless they call him up and play him with Schneider or put Schneider and Miller and Jones and Truba. I just, I don't know. I, I, I just don't, unfortunately, I don't see it working out, which sucks because I was really high on Zachary Jones. Austin Ruschoff, another big boy. The Rangers love their big boys. 6'7", 230, 25 years old. He'll be released by the Rangers this year. He won't be back. But, again, another guy who's just struggled to develop in Harvard. Not much of a surprise. Having a decent season, all things considered. But he will not be with the Rangers after this season. I, I, at least I don't see it happening. Matthew Robertson, another kid who just really stymied in Hartford. He just has not. So, all right. I, I'm going to say this. Again, having watched a few Hartford Wolfpack games this year, Ma Matthew Robertson is visually a better player than he was last year for Hartford. His skating is better. His defending is better. He's doing all, he's doing everything right. It's just, again, with the Rangers having such a crowded defensive system right now, a lot of guys ahead of him on the depth chart. I just don't see a future with Matthew Robertson on the New York Rangers. There's just too many guys ahead of him. And it's a damn shame because Matthew Robertson is a pretty damn good defensive prospect and would likely be a top defensive prospect in every other team in the NHL system. It's just the Rangers have such a deep system you know, he'd he'd have to really show out to uh, to to make it to the NHL with the Rangers. I do believe that he will be a guy the Rangers flip at the deadline for a rental, which sucks because I hate trading for rentals. But that's what Wayne can got to do, and he will be an NHL defensive a defenseman one day. I just don't believe it's going to be with the Rangers, which sucks because I think Matthew Robertson is like a modern NHL defenseman. You know, he's not just good at defending. The you know the kid just does everything. He can forecheck, backcheck, paycheck, uh, defends well, skates well, passes well, just does everything well. And I just, it sucks. I just don't see him having a future with the Rangers. Gustav Rydal, the low risk signing of the Rangers offseason. I do believe he will see NHL games at some point this season. Uh, it's amazing we're calling a 28 year old a prospect. But, anyways, nine points in 22 AHL games. People seem to speak pretty highly of him, and, um, despite his numbers not being great. But again, no one's numbers in Hartford are that great. He's actually playing pretty damn well and will probably at some point this season get NHL games. If not, he'll go back to the SHL and whatever. It's, it's a zero risk. Zero harm investment by the New York Rangers. And if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. It is what it is. I do believe he'll get an NHL game this season. Lori Paniemi, a prospect uh, that people were and still are pretty damn high on at 23 years old. Paniemi's defied all odds. Another fifth-round pick gone well. Drafted in 2018, he's been nothing but a pure goal scorer since he's been drafted. Uh, 26 goals in his last season. In, I'm sorry, his last two seasons in the Liga. 26 points last year, 9.7 goals, 25 games this year. Pacing for about 20 goals in the AHL. I don't see Patty Emmy as likely uh, as becoming an NHL player as he was when we first brought him over from the league. He really hasn't produced at such a high clip where it's like, wow, this kid's going to be an NHL player. I Honestly, I don't even see it happening anymore. I do believe that once his contract expires, the Rangers are going to let him walk unless he, again, shows out and has a ridiculous season. But another player that falls casualty to a super poor developmental system for the Rangers in Hartford. I mean, it's it's so bad down there in Hartford. They've got to get their shit figured out. And I do think part of having a good system in the AHL is having players like Johnny Brzezinski, who is an excellent AHL player and becoming a really good NHL player in his own right. 
um, in the system for years and years and years. Even like the Grand Rapids Griffins, like man, guys like Malcolm Rath for years in the system, and, and and having a consistent roster is big in the AHL because it's hardly teams ever have consistent rosters. And when you have consistent rosters and have consistent veterans, it helps the young guys acclimate easier. Whereas a lot of these young guys are coming onto the team, playing in the AHL for the first time with veterans that are playing on the same team as them for the first freaking time. You've got to have a system, and the Rangers do not have a system, not a consistent one. And until the Rangers have a consistent AHL team, it's likely they'll never have a good one and that prospects will continue to go to Hartford and fail. Tim Gettinger finally developing into something decent. 6 6 220 24 years old. If the Rangers re-sign him at this season, I'd be amazed. I hope they do because Tim Gettinger is an awesome AHL player. He will be a guy you could build the system around as a middle 6 AHL forward, but they won't do that. They'll let him go. 10 points, 16 games. The kid is showing out. He's having a really good season projected for 38 points in 60 games. I I don't really think Tim Gentry has an NHL future anywhere, if I'm being honest with you. But I, I do hope that he is re-signed and he remains in Hartford and takes on a veteran role and plays his career. Not his whole, you know, maybe not his whole career, but I do I do hope he stays in Hartford and becomes one of those veterans, those guys. You know, a leader down there because I, I think he has the capability to do that. You know, a guy who... Fifth round pick, the Rangers believed in him. They got him in the NHL, AHL, and he, and he and he's played well ever since. He's never really had like a season where like, wow, this guy sucks. No, he's always been solid for the Rangers and the Wolfpack. So it's like he'd be a good guy to just keep around. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Obviously, at 24 years old, Tim Gettinger probably wants to iron out an NHL role somewhere, so he probably won't say he won't be down for that. But it would be great if he if if he would because I think that he has a, a future with the Harvard Wolfpack as a leader. Like it's a guy you can maybe throw the C on one day and have him, you know, play out his career in Hartford as the captain, like a few players in the AHL have done. At least that's what I hope. Uh, we're gonna skip over Trevino. We're gonna go with Ty Emerson first. This is the defenseman we got back in the Patrick Nemeth trade. People did not think very much of him. He was more of a throw in, and I kind of disagree. Twelve points in twenty eight games has been arguably hard, one of Hartford's top defensemen so far this season, behind Walensky and maybe Robertson. But Ty Emerson is actually showing that he might have a future as maybe the 6th or 7th NHL defenseman in some capacity. Maybe a Jeff Boy Whitka type for all you for all you Rangers fans that have been watching for as long as I have. Uh, but a guy who went from being a toss-in in a trade, a, a cap dump trade, to actually maybe having some sort of NHL future is not bad. I, I, I mean, I'm not speaking the world of Ty Emerson right now, but I do believe there is a a chance that you know a couple of years down the road as he continues to develop that we could see him you know as an injury call up and maybe even a seventh defenseman not now he's got he's got a lot of development a, de- a lot of development to undergo but you know not a guy to be overly high and excited on but a guy you'd be like you know what he'll get NHL games at some point and, and uh, that is not a bad thing by any means what the fuck was that Bobby Trevino the steal of the offseason, apparently, in college uh, college free agents. Trevino, a, a guy that was excellent for the Rangers in the preseason, but just too deep right now. So, since the AHL, 99, born in 99, will be 24 years old next month. Um, decent start for Hartford. I mean, 13 points in 24 games on a really shitty team is not a bad thing by any means. Um, I, he'll, he'll get NHL games, uh, and I think he'll get injury call-ups. He'll get all that stuff, but um, Trevino's a really solid player. And I, and I don't think his numbers are, are truly speak to how he is as a player because if you watch him play, he's physical. He plays in all situations. He's just he's a mother effort to play against. And I, and I and I do think he'll get NHL games. It's just again, I, I'm afraid he's gonna fall victim to the Rangers' shitty Hartford system. And I, this is probably the thirtieth time I've said that in this video. I just don't see any way around it, unfortunately. The one prospect who seemed to have defied the uh, crappy Wolfpack system is Will Cooley, a guy that I was down on a guy I, I saw nothing in I, I call it Ryan Grop hangover I just saw nothing in him and uh yeah he's having a monster year I know 13 points in 20 games doesn't speak monster but as a rookie in the AHL for a shitty Harvard Wolfpack team that is really good especially considering he's leading or at the top of the list in uh, the Harvard Wolfpack uh, scoring categories certain scoring categories on pace for 20 goals in his rookie year in the A show watching <laughs> Watching Will Cooley play, he's third on the team in scoring. Which is wild. Tied first in goals behind Panayami. Um, Watching a few Wolfpack games, Will Cooley is, more often than not, the most notable, noticeable player for the Hartford Wolfpack. He's faster than I thought. He has better hands than I thought. He has a better shot than I thought. He is better everything than what I thought he was. Uh, having 
you know, you could borderline say ignorant in that I, I did not ever watch him play an OHL game. Again, I just had, with Ryan Groff hangover, I assumed nothing of Will Cooley. He's really, he's really turned me into, like, a, like a Will Cooley, like, fan. Like, I actually, I think Will Cooley is going to be a solid NHL player, and he will be a solid role player, and I think the Rangers will use him in a middle six role, if not next season, the year after, and he will be an NHL player someday for the New York Rangers, and I do not believe the Rangers should trade Will Cooley. I think he will be an excellent player for the Rangers. He's physical, he's a leader, and I, I, I look forward to the day that Will Cooley is called up to the New York Rangers and, you know, becomes a guy that we could win with. Uh, but that's about all I have for this video, guys. I hope you all enjoyed watching. That was a long-winded video. How long were we going for? 40 minutes going over pretty much every single Rangers prospect. But that was cool, though. The Rangers suck right now. I know they're on a bit of a heater. The holiday hangover they lost to watching 4 nothing. Whatever. We just figured it was fun to do something a little bit different. But anyways, I'm going to go ahead and log off, guys. Uh, I'm going to eat some breakfast at 11 o'clock in the morning. Sounds good, right? Oh, man. I love not being in school. Anyways, y'all take care. Let's go, Rangers. Future is still bright. Peace out.